Happy Sabbath. God is good. Let me see those who are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Before we get into the sermon of the day, allow me to dispense with the following activities necessary for housekeeping. As I invite Sister Esther and Brother Jim to join me on the pulpit, I also want to extend the invitation to Sister Lucy and Brother Moses to join me on the pulpit. I also want to extend the invitation to invite the parents of the, four, the, the names mentioned to join me on the pulpit. At the same time, I invite our chief ed elder, Elder Tom Omura to come, Elder Rotich to join me, Elder Tom Oruaru to join me, Elder Ochuka to join me so that you can be able to pray with this uh, couple. As they come, allow me to make the following announcement. Number one, our last our next, our current edition of New Life is out. I believe you've seen it. This copy is available for every departmental heads at the church clerk's office. And again, uh, those of us, you can be able to access this material online. Uh, tonight, we shall have night vigil, which will commence from, uh, it's a night vigil online, running, as you know, uh, may the Lord prepare us even as we will be coming together for the same. Uh, church, wedding is a wonderful thing. Marriage is beautiful. Uh, the following young people are ready to settle down as husbands and wives. What do you say? Yeah. You see, the month of July is necessary because two days from now, I'll be turning seven in marriage. What do you say? But even if you are not happy, we are happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Seven years in marriage. Uh, we want to pray with Brother Moses. Moses will be, his, the marriage for Moses and Sister Lucy will be taking place here tomorrow. Uh, our senior pastor will be here. The wedding for my brother Jim and Sister Esther will be taking place at Nairobi Central. I will be there to witness. What do you say to that point? Amen. So you can choose where you want to be tomorrow, but personally I'll be alternating. Are we together? <laughs> so I want to invite my senior pastor is here. Pastor Owur is my spiritual mentor. He pastored me at Nairobi East. He has pastored this church. He'll be able to pray with this team before we get to the to the word that we have today. Please uh, kindly furnish Pastor with a mic that you'll be able to pray. I want to invite them to come in. The elders will surround them. So, Brother Moses, the parents. This is Moses and Sister Lucy, the parents. Thank you so much. And welcome to Kenya. May the Lord bless you. I believe that this is wonderful because Kenya is marrying Tanzania. Hallelujah. Some are not happy, but we are moving. Hallelujah. We are moving. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Brother Jim, we congratulate you. We have seen how Brother Moses and Brother Jim conduct their affairs. We believe that the one, two, these two gentlemen are going to make excellent husbands. What do you say? Yeah. We have also seen that Sister Lucy and Sister Esther are spiritual. The bedroom and the strength of a family is to marry a, a lady who can pray with you. What do you say? Yeah. So, thank you so much. We are praying for you. You are ready to make excellent wives. And we are praying that God will bless you with both boys and girls. Hallelujah. Yeah. My pastor, this is your time. Thank you, church. Uh, shall we pray? Loving Master, Almighty God, you who knows the end from the very beginning, you who knew each one of us even before we were created and ordained how our lives would be like, Father God, we just want to come to you with thanksgiving. 
we surrender to your will because we do understand that before we became, you were there. And I want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful church, the New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church, for preparing young people to follow the statutes that you laid down, that marriage is holy unto you, the same way tithes and offerings and the Sabbath is holy unto you. These our parents that have accompanied the young people, Lord God, we thank you for them, for raising the children in a manner that respects your name and the, your laid down orders. One thank you, Almighty God, for these two young men and these two young ladies. In a special way, Lord, we want to commit them to you. That, my Lord, because you are the one who matches, how the two become one is a mystery that will take us eternity to learn when we get to eternal kingdom. Lord, because it has pleased you that these two be joined together to be one flesh as a husband and a wife. And because they have followed the procedures, they have followed, Lord, they laid down ways of doing it in a manner that will invite you in their homes. How I pray in advance that, my Lord, as they get into this and be united, Almighty Father, may you make their homes to be small heavens. May you make their homes to be homes that are blessed by you. Father God, we pray in advance that you bless them with all sorts of blessings that you have promised to your children. Blessings of finances, blessings of good families, blessings of good children that will honor you, that will worship you. Blessings, Lord, of good health that they may continue to live enjoying life together. Be with us, Almighty Father. Bless the church that has taken also this in their hands to make sure that our children are brought in the way that will honor your name. Father, we pray even for our parents that have come all the way from Tanzania. May their stay here become a special blessing to us. Bless all the parents. Bless all the young people. Those who are still in the plants. Lord God, we commit all these plants into able hands. And the families that are here, Lord, we pray that may you renew our family. May you remind us of the vows that we took. That, Lord, as we witness this, we may also go back and reflect on the vows that we gave to each other. May you continue to renew our homes, renew our lives. That is befitting the needs and the demands of heaven. We pray that may you walk with us now and forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Moses and Sister Lucy. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Brother Jim and Sister Esther. We wish you all the best. My elders, you can greet them even as we usher them out. Thank you so much. God bless you. All the visitors from Tanzania, may we see you up standing. All the visitors from Tanzania, may we see you up standing. Uh, please wave to the church. Uh, please wave back to them. Thank you so much. All the visitors, you are welcome. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Once again, allow me to greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. God is good. Happy Sabbath. Let me see you once again, those who are happy to be in the house of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Allow me to appreciate the church choir for the wonderful song, Shout the Walls of Zion. I think you've made my work easier here already. May the Lord bless you. I thank you so much, the Kalis. Thank you so much for the wonderful singing. Thank you so much, uh, Matete's family, for the wonderful song. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Emanuela and Sister Emelina, for the wonderful singing. Uh, thank you so much, Brother Favor and Sister M Miriam, for the wonderful children story. 
I invite all of us for this sharing this afternoon. I believe you have seen that sermon title which says a picture of grace. Now turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, uh, turn to your neighbor looking straight into the eye and say neighbor. Yeah. Some are not saying they are still asleep. Neighbor. Yeah. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. You are the picture of God's grace. Now you didn't do very well. Let us try one more time. Some of us are still asleep. Say neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. You are the picture of God's grace. And that is a thought that I want to draw from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through to verses 10. Luke 19, 1 through to verses 10. Before we get into the reading, let me pray. Loving Master, the creator of the universe, you promised to labor with me. You called me to this ministry. Now it is 17 years since we started this together. I pray that this sermon will impart the minds, instruct the art, and influence behaviors towards godliness. I plead Jesus Christ that this sermon will disturb the comfortable. May it also comfort those who are troubled. I plead in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What do you say? Amen. Uh, read with me Luke 19, verses 1 through to verses 19, 10. It says, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who, was Jesus, who Jesus was but could not because, the, because of the crowd, for he was short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore fig tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today, I must stay at your house. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Verse 6. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Verse 8. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by a false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, if you are still there, say amen. amen. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. A picture of grace, a picture of grace. And I want to begin by saying that the city of Jericho bears testimony that God is a seeker and a saver of the lost. Before we seek out God, God does the initial seeking. Before we reach out to God, God reach out to us first. Romans 3.11 says that no one understands, no one seeks after the Lord. Ezekiel 34.16 says, the God says that I will seek after the lost. I will bring back those driven away. I will bind the wounds of those who are sick. God is a seeker of the lost. Before you seek out for God, God does the initial seeking. Zacchaeus and Rahab can testify. Amen. Are you with me? You are not with me yet. Are you there? If you are there, say amen. I'm saying that before you seek out for God, God does the first word, initial word, seeking. Before you reach out to God, God reach out to you first. For Rahab and Zacchaeus can testify. The city of Jericho, 
bears testimonies that heaven rules the earth. God is sovereign. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down because God is sovereign. Mm, hallelujah. Yes, now you are with me. Now you are with me. God is powerful and God is mighty. Nothing is impossible with God Almighty. God is sovereign. The fortress walls of Jericho came tumbling down at the blow of the trumpet. And when the children of God shouted a grand shout, and the Bible records that the walls of Jericho came down to be a testimony today that the living God rules over the kingdoms of men. What does the church say? Number three. The city of Jericho bears testimonies that God abhors evil. God hates immorality, he hates idolatry. This city, long sold for idolatry and immorality, God had to destroy it to be a testimony to the children of men, even today, that God is powerful. God hates evil, God hates adultery, he hates sin, but he loves sinners. God is mighty, God is powerful, God abhors evil. I don't expect you to say amen now there. God of us, evil. The Bible records that this city was not to be rebuilt. This city was a curse, for God had said that curse is the man before God who shall rise up to raise the foundation of this city, according to Joshua 6, 26. And the Bible records that after a long period of time, no one tempted to reconstruct this city until a man 500 years later, El of Bethel, according to 1 Kings 16.34, the Bible records that this man went against the, the, the voice of God. He went against the rules of God and he constructed the city losing two sons of his, that is Abiram and Sekub. You see, ignorance sometimes is a bad thing. Ignorance can make you think you are right. Are we together? But you are not right. The Bible records that this man went against the, the stipulated, uh, uh, the voice of God. God had said that, cast before God is a man who shall rise to construct this city. So why would this man reconstruct this city yet? The warning was clear that the moment you do that, you will lose your first son and the youngest son. Maybe someone offered him money which he could not resist. So maybe a day when the preacher, like this Sabbath was preaching about the text, he was asleep. Maybe the day when the, the preacher was preaching about this, he was walking about the church compound. When serious preaching was taking place, he was greeting people within the church compound. Maybe no one reminded him of the curse because he wanted fame, power, that he could not resist. You see, we are in a generation that people can do anything to make money and to be rich. People are ready to kill for fame and wealth. People are ready to dance naked. Mm, let me blow it down so that you understand. Even in the generation now that we have, look at those who are celebrated as content creators, even in this country. And those who are shaking themselves, they are dancing naked. And there are men who are saying that with me, I love bam bam, I love bam bam. They are sleeping late, not coming to church because they love those with the flesh. My friend, there's nothing in the flesh. Life is in Jesus Christ. I don't expect you to say amen now. Because with this generation, people believe that if you want to be f famous, then just begin to walk naked. And there will be men there who are liking you. They are saying this is the one. This one is the one. This one is the one. My friend, the value of a woman is not on the shape of the bam bam. The value of a woman is our knowing our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you are with me now. Now you are with me. The value of a woman is not in her producing children. The value of a woman is not in her singing or doing all sorts of things the woman the power of a woman is in a woman knowing jesus christ and him crucified if you don't know god whether you are dancing naked or not you, that is not the value don't try to prove yourself god has given you the value hallelujah the bible says 
that this man went against what God had said. Many people are worshipping idols today. Many people are worshipping fame and money today. It's the idols that people even worship in church today. But let us worship God who is the author and the finish of our faith. People can do anything for money. There's one in the Guinness Book of Record who celebrated for eating 18 metallic bicycles. I mean, the Guinness Book, go and study it. This man is celebrated for eating 18 bicycles, eating 15 supermarket trolleys, eating two metallic beds, eating one coffin. He celebrated there. Another one, he celebrated said for sniffing 5,600 5, feet. Sniffing. Just sniffing for the record. Are we together? We are in this generation that God, people can do anything for money. People can do anything to kill for money. Material gain. My friend, with God, with us, nothing is impossible. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm just introducing someone. This someone is one hour. So relax. I know you want to participate in the Holy Communion. This someone is one hour. And you are saying that the city of Jericho is a reminder that there is a God in heaven who have us evil. During the time of Jesus, the Bible records that the city of Jericho is booming. The city of Jericho is a traffic center. The city of Jericho, because the man had constructed, but there are scholars who believe that this city was also reconstructed by Herodias. So the city of Jericho was doing well. Everything could sell in Jericho. Are you with me? In fact, the Bible says that this city, during this time, about 12,000 priests, Levitical priests, resided here. You know the story of uh, the, the Good Samaritan? That the priest was crossing over from uh, between Jericho and, and Jerusalem. And you also know that in between, because Jericho and Jerusalem is just 15 miles away, 10 to 15 miles away. The Bible says that in this city, there also live tax collector. Many were here. Roman officials were here. Roman soldiers were here. So everyone wanted to go to Jericho because Jericho was doing so well during that time. All the investors wanted to be in Jericho. Those who wanted to sell themselves wanted to go to Jericho. The priests and Levitical priests, all were, they all found residence in Jericho. So Jericho was doing so well. But the Bible says, a man lived in Jericho who is a tax collector. You are not with me. You are not with me. The Bible records that Jesus is passing through Jericho, heading to what? To Jerusalem. This is happening one week just before the death of Christ. He is going to Jerusalem where he will be arrested, betrayed, mocked, all the way to, 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 and be crucified. Christ had the power. Mm. The power to lift that cross to swing in the sky. That is too heavy for you. So let me try this one. I think this row is doing very well. Christ had the power to actually force that cross. You see, many scholars believe that that cross was too heavy. But that is not true. Christ had to bear that pain of the cross because he wanted to bear it for me. Mm. Jesus died for me. My friend... He had the power to levitate that thing in the sky all the way to Calvary. But because of me, Christ had to bear the same mockery for my sins. What do you say, church? That's why you are here today. Because Jesus loves you. Christ is passing. In fact, about six hours before this, Christ had healed two blind beggars. According to Matthew 20, 29 to 34. The beggars, because Christ is moving with a multitude. Mm, the beggars are following him. The poor are following him. The rich are following him. The, the ragged beggars are following him. The eyes and the laws all had friends in Jesus. You see, you can discriminate. You can choose who to love. 
but not with Jesus. Hallelujah. You can call people names, but Christ was a friend of everyone. That is the Savior I'm preaching about. A picture of grace that even those rejected with the society in Christ, they found a Savior and a friend. You may be rejected. People can talk ill about you. Your fa family members can reject you. Your own husband can be abusive. Everyone, even church members can turn against you. But in Christ, you have a brother and a sister. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm still introducing the someone. Jesus is passing by. The two blind beggars are shouted by saying, Oh, son of David, have mercy on us. Are you with me? And the Bible says, some people tried to calm them down. Mm. Some people tried to calm them down. Saying, my friend, you are making noise. And the Bible records, the more they tried to calm them down, the more they shouted, saying, son of David, have mercy on us. Then Christ says, hey, what do you want? Mm. I'm still in the within the boundary of the text. What do you want? And then they say, Savior, my eyes, our eyes. At the moment they said, my eyes, God was able to open and they were able to see. What do you say? Tell Jesus what you want. Tell him your pain. Tell Jesus your financial challenges. Tell Jesus about your children who are not in church. Whatever you want, tell Jesus as these people were able to shout and the Bible says God was able to answer them. What do you say, church? Christ is mighty. Christ is powerful. Tell Jesus what you need. Tell Jesus about your crazy co-worker. Tell Jesus about your boss who is frustrating you. Tell Jesus about that person who comes late to the office every day. Tell Jesus everything. You want food? Tell Jesus. You want a child? Tell Jesus. And he'll be able to deliver you. Mm. Because he is powerful. Mm. My friend, Jesus is powerful. People just don't understand how Christ is powerful. I was sharing with my friends here that in 2002, I was in class 6. But I ran away from home. And I said... This is the end of this thing. I will never continue with these studies. 2003, I was to be in class 7. I was out. I was a cameraman taking photos for my uncle in a place called Kadongo. 2004, my uncle says, young man, when I look at you, you can pass the exam. I want you to go back to school. So I decided in 2004 to go back. I didn't go back to class 6. I didn't go back to class 7. I went straight to class 8 in a small school. And out of 500, I was able to get 363. I was number 2. What do you say? Amen. You may not say amen, but I'm continuing. Hallelujah. You see that those who are not happy for people. Even if you are not happy, we are continuing. Hallelujah. Because Christ is mighty. There are those who are rejected by society. There are those people thought God could not lift them up. But because God is powerful, mm, today they are celebrated. What do you say, my friend? See, I'm preaching in English now. <laughs> Beyond doctor, before doctors and engineers. And you are listening to this. Hallelujah. Because Christ is powerful. The Bible says, in Jericho, there is a man who is a tax collector. Luke is very interesting because Luke is a Gentile. But Luke says that this man first is a Jew because of his name. Because the name Zacchaeus simply means innocent, pure, and clean. Zacchaeus. The Jews, that means that Zacchaeus is trying to invoke into the memory of someone who has read the text. 
that this is now about the, how the Jews are proud. Because Jews are a proud Jew. It had three things. And they could thank God for those three things. First, a proud Jew could thank God for not being created a woman. And this explains why women were divorced in the Jewish culture easily. When your woman is standing with someone along the way, divorce. When the woman has put a lot of salt in the food, divorce. When the woman has, changed, uh, has, has, has actually exchanged words with you, simple words, or challenge your mindset, divorce. So a Jew, and there are some men here who are like the Jews. <laughs> that women are there to be seen and not to be heard. You are a typical Jew. The Jews were very proud people. Number one, they thank God for not being created a woman. Number two, a Jew will thank God for not being a Samaritan. So you understand why they hated Samaritan? Because Samaritans were a blend of the Jew and the Gentile. They came as a result of intermarriage. So these people did not like the Samaritans. A proud Jew looked down Samaritans. A proud Jew. There are people here who are like the Jews. They hate people because of their skins. They hate people because of their culture. They hate people because of how they look. They hate people because you are not married yet. Tell them about the loving Savior. Why are you not saying amen, my friend? So, number three. A proud Jew hated the Gentiles. But the Bible says that Zacchaeus is a tax collector. Are you with me? He is working for the enemy. He is working for the Roman Romans. He is taking from his own culture, his own people, and is giving to the enemy. But you see, tax collectors are hated. Even now. <laughs> Even now. <laughs> People are crying, tax, tax, tax collectors were hated during that time. Even, <laughs> let me not go there. Let me not go there. People hated tax collectors. And the Bible says that it's a Jew, it's a tax collectors. Tax collectors were not even welcome in church. Because there was a, a group of Jews who were known as the zealots. The zealots came to the church like this with a knife. So many tax collectors were actually assassinated. But they could not move closer to Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus is a K. Telonist. No, that is not for you. Zacchaeus is the chief tax collector working for the enemy. Now, but they could come and warn him. They could look at him because the zealot could not move closer to him. But they could say, Zacchaeus, Today you are eating and drinking. But there is a Messiah who will come, who is powerful, who will take everything you've taken from us and will give back to us. So this man all along was wondering who could be this man be who is powerful and can take everything back and give to us. So the Bible records that Jesus is moving within the city. But then Zacchaeus runs ahead of Jesus. You see, he's a rich man. And in the culture of the Jews, a rich man is not expected to run. It's like asking President Ruto to run ahead of you. Asking Raila to run ahead of you. Asking. Jesus, you not understand this. These people... Zacchaeus runs ahead of Jesus and he climbs the tree. No one expects a rich man to climb a tree. No one expects a noble man to run. This one tells you that all along, Zacchaeus knew there's a power of a savior. Christ is walking with the multitude. And the Bible records when he gets there, he stops. So this one brings me to part C of this sermon, which is the last part. But see, it's five things we can deduce from this story. Five what? 
Number one. Number one thing you can deduce from this story is that the power of God's grace. My friend, God's grace is powerful. You cannot outsin the grace of God. If you have the cup of sin, Christ has the ocean of grace. No one can outsin grace. A drunkard cannot outsin grace. An adulterer cannot outsin grace. A serious fornicator cannot outsin grace. That, my friend, you cannot say you have gone far away that God cannot bring you back. The grace of God is sufficient. Mm. No one can outrun the grace of God. Ask Jonah. Jonah will tell you that in the, sh- in the, in the, in the, in the fish, the grace of God alo- located me and brought me back. Yani you cannot run ahead of the grace. Grace is powerful. No, you guys didn't understand this. Let me try the choir. Grace is powerful. That you cannot outsin grace. You cannot outrun the grace. You see, the grace followed Jonah. His legs did not want to go to Nineveh. But the grace of God forced him to go and preach. You see, these things we, this thing we call, I will go. That many people don't understand. Just talk about grace. Grace which can make the stone to preach. Shout words of Zion. Mm. Hallelujah. Grace. You cannot outsin grace. You cannot confine grace. See, there are those who think that only they are blessed. So they look at those who are not doing well. Then they say, this might be sinners. You cannot confine the grace. There are those who think that this gospel of Advent soon would have been confined in Lunyans and Kisi. And they are surprised that this gospel went to Mount Kenya and brought people to this church. You cannot confine grace. Grace is mighty than you. It's mighty than your degree. Hallelujah. It's mighty than the house you live in. Grace of God is powerful. It is grace that saved Rab the Allot. It is grace that called Abraham from Ur. It was grace that met the soul of Tassus on his way to Damascus. It was grace that changed Jacob from Jacob to Israel. It is grace that will change your name too. Grace will bless you. Grace will heal you. Why are you guys not responding? Let me try, uh, leave them. Grace will bless your family. Though you are wicked, grace still blesses you. There are many who are blessed because of grace. They are driving cars they shouldn't drive. They stay in houses they should not stay in. They have children they are not supposed to have. You know yourself. You know yourself. That the grace of God which surpasses human understanding can still come to your family. Let us give God glory for the grace. Grace is powerful. Number two, the particularity of God. So which one is the first one? These guys are not with me. Which one is the first point? The power of God's word. Number two, the particularity of who? You see, God's grace is particular. When grace is calling Elder Tom, he's calling you. When grace is calling El Ruaru, grace is calling you. God is particular in the way he does things. You see, there are those who think that heaven will not be powerful without their parents. They are in charge because your father is an elder. Even this morning, your parents were dragging you to come to church. You didn't want. And you think that when the trumpet will sound, when your father will be going up, you will also go up because of your father. Character is not transferable. Hallelujah. No one will make it to the city because your father is a pastor. No. People will go to heaven individually because they have a connection with who? Jesus. In fact, Ezekiel 14, 14 to, through to 18 says that though Job, Daniel were in it, they will deliver 
Not their sons, not their daughters, but themselves. My friend, going to heaven is not corporate. We will not stand before God saying that we, Kikuyus, we have come. No one will go like that. No one will think and say that because we lose, we have arrived. No one will say that we, Omogus, we have arrived. People will go to heaven individually. My friend, make a relationship with God. Whether your sons are in church, your daughters are coming to church, your father not in church, you have a relationship with God. This man, God calls him by name. Say, Zacchaeus, do what? Zacchaeus, do what? But see, Zacchaeus knew that Christ will handle him properly. And there are men who are looking at him by saying, today, today you will see. So on top of the tree, he knew that Christ, who can handle them truthlessly. So when Christ calls Zacchaeus, and then he says, come down east. He says, now I'm finished. But he didn't know that Christ is not like men. You are not with me. So let me, you see Adventists, you have to prove every point you are saying. David says, I better fall in the hands of God than in the hands of men. Because men are wicked. Men can kill you, but God is loving. Man can say, today we are destroying this person. This man is too much for us. That's why we are afraid of taking a photo next to your car. Because you don't know the source of your car. I don't expect you to say amen now. <laughs> this is why we don't like taking photo even next to your house. Because I don't know the source of the money that you used to buy that house. That is why heaven will be so beautiful. Because no amount of corruption will be used to, corrupt, to, to construct the walls of, of the city. The seeds of gold. No amount of corruption. You see, sometimes... Even taking a photo is a challenge. First, we are afraid of confusing our enemies. Because when you post on social media, our enemies who don't want us to excel, to succeed, will commit suicide. They will, thought, they will think we have succeeded, not knowing you are still a trekking officer. The grace of God is powerful. The grace of God is mighty. God is particular in the way he does his things. When God says your husband has arrived, no amount of gossip can stop it. Hmm. Well, let me sing for you. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that our sins under Yonder on Calvary's There where Grace God Grace that will pardon and cleanse Grace, grace God's grace Grace that is greater than all. My friend, grace is powerful. Third point, a God of love. See, the Jews hated women. The Jews disliked the Samaritans. The Jews hated the Gentiles. But everyone who was rejected by society all found friend in Jesus Christ. I'm saying that everyone can reject you. Everyone can turn against you. People can malign you in the society, in the village, where you come from. But I'm saying you have a friend in Christ. People can call you name. They can say, why is she 40 and not married? But you see, grace has a way of making you not to be married till you are 40. Okay, let me bring it down so that you understand. Because they, from the families where you come from, we push people to get married. When they are approaching 35, 
You call them. If your son, you say, are you sure that you are okay? <laughs> are you sure that uh, you are okay? My friend, the grace can cover you not to marry a wrong person. In this society, people get married, then within one month, they have killed each other. True or false? I better stay home with my daughter, even if she's 40, because the grace is covering her. Hey, I don't expect you to say amen because you are typical Jews. <laughs> I better, I rather walk than to have a car which may kill me before I even reach 80. I better walk because the grace is covering me. I don't expect an amen here because people just love cars. And there are young ladies, even in church, who are not getting married because they are praying for a man driving a car. My friend, car is not life. Marry a man with vision. They are not with me. I told you of that lady who rejected me. It was it here. Did I share it here? I have shared it here. Don't repeat stories. I shared that story here. True or false? Can I repeat it? Yes. Oh no, thank you so much. I told you that this sermon is one hour. I told you that as a security guard, I was working, working at National Media Group, seventh floor. Do you remember that story? You guys were not there. You may, oh, I understand why you don't know it. But there was this lady, see, I was in Wells Fargo. And they had a serious ailment which covered my eyes and only left the eye. I covered my head and only left the portion of the eye. So there was this lady. I used to work in seventh floor, national media group. Then, then, I never prayed for a girlfriend. I only prayed for a wife all the time. So this lady, See, each and every time she goes in and she comes out, I could say this one. You see, every man must try. <laughs> I could say this one. Mm. This one is a potential wife. So one day, I plucked the courage. In, in high school, that is the English they used to say. I plucked up the courage. And then I said, if it is bad, let it be what? If it is good, let it be what? So the lady came in the morning and I say, lady, you see, I'm very direct. Everything I do, very direct. I don't go round, go round. My friend, many of you here are still single because they're going round and going round. <laughs> Tell the lady direct that you are the one. Are we together? But many of us are looking for dictionaries. Mm. I just say, sister, how are you? You look nice this morning. Is it possible for you and me to start something? I was very direct. To start something leading to marriage. I was very direct. I expected a direct answer. But the lady looked at me from my head. A serious helmet. The lady did not know that I'm one of the best handsome men in this world. I wish she knew. So, I had my uniform and then my serious shoe of security. And the lady said that, you. You and start what? Leading to what? <laughs> and the lady walked away. The lady did not know that one day I will stand here to preach in suit. <laughs> My friend, the grace of God can cut your hair, can brush your teeth, and can change your wardrobe. Hallelujah! Grace of God! But now, married, in fact, we are turning seven in two days from now. Wish us well. Because that is what the grace does. Grace does not look where you've come from. I'm in the text. We read together. 
Because when Christ met him, Christ did not ask, you tax collector, come. Grace does not do that. Grace does not say that you, I know you are being promiscuous. No. Grace simply says, Zacchaeus, calm down. Are you with me? That is what the grace does. Many of you are what you are because of the grace. You are the picture of what? Grace. And you can look at your wife and you say, when I met you, when I met you, <laughs> let me leave there. Point number four. Point number four. A wounded soldier is still a soldier. You are not with me. Many of us here are wounded. Many of us, you are in church today looking clean, but you are wounded. Don't look at the other person and call them wounded. Everyone here is wounded, including the preacher. If you are not wounded, raise up your hand. If you are wounded, say thanks to the grace. Grace is powerful. A wounded soldier is still a soldier. Some of us, we are limping, wounded, but let us keep moving because of grace. You see, a Christianity where the fall of a brother become the topic for gossip is satanic. I don't expect Adventists to respond because it is Adventism where many people are really gossip, real gossipers. You come to church early. You sit at the corner. Then you look at those who come late. Then you say, Zacchaeus are arriving. Zacchaeus are coming. You think that if the church choir, you are not in the church choir, then the choir cannot sing. Those who disturb the trainers in the choir are those who sing discord. And you think that if you are not in that choir, the choir will fall. My friend, even if you leave the choir, God will bring someone else to sing better. I don't expect an amen now. You see, part of the sermon is not to make you comfortable. It is also to disturb your comfort. Hallelujah. Grace. A member of the church can fall. Let us not be, let him not become the center of topic we have Jesus Christ to talk about. A Christianity where the strong in faith refuses to hold the hand of the weak is demonic. Okay, this row, you are getting tired. Let me try the choir. A Christianity where we pray that a brother can fall so that you occupy his position is demonic. Oh, you guys are asleep. Let me try this one now. A Christianity where we pray for a brother to fall so that we can occupy or be promoted is demonic. A Christianity is when we understand that a wounded soldier is still a soldier. Uh, this, that a man is too small for that point. Christianity is to understand that everyone in the church is wounded, but being wounded is not the hand of the road. A wounded Samson brought down the gates of Philistine with him. A wounded Jesus Christ brought down the gates of hell with him. Being wounded is not the end. Being wounded does not does, could disqualify you from the race. Being wounded is a reminder that you keep trusting, walking with Jesus Christ. My friend, that's what I understood many years ago. When my father died, my father was a huge man. My father was a huge man. In a span of two weeks, my father, the body came back home in a, as a loathsome specimen of a human being. Now that English is too heavy. My father, who was huge, the body which was brought that my father had died surprised everyone. My brother, who ran to see the body, he is still struggling to be in church even today. Because someone shouted by saying that God had called my father. Which kind of a God calls people like that? Leaving us orphaned at that age. 
His death left us scared. But we remembered, as long as we keep trusting and looking to Jesus, we are mighty. My friend, people can call you names. People can discourage you. Keep trusting. You may be struggling with addiction. Tell Jesus. You may be waiting for a child. Tell Jesus. You may be waiting for a husband to come. Tell it to the Lord. Because a wounded soldier is still a soldier. Thank you so much. The last point. The last point. Today. <laughs> I'm in the text. Today. Salvation. Let me try Elder Simron. Elder. Today. I'm in the text. Today. Salvation has come. In your what? Now this is not a good church. Are you afraid that you may become a burden in the future to your children? Are you afraid of the pending surgery? Are you afraid of the bank balance? Are you afraid that the future may not be sweet and interesting? Are you afraid of tomorrow? Are you afraid that your children may not be in church forever? Are you afraid... Or are you going through a painful divorce experience? Are you going through the sorrows of life? Did you struggle to come to church this morning? Always remember, when you are tempted to be discouraged, like Zacchaeus says, that, that God tells Zacchaeus, that Zacchaeus, don't be afraid. Today, salvation has come. Why are you not responding? My friend, don't be afraid. Christ, in fact, there's a songwriter who says that, cast all your burdens and cares upon you, for he cares for you. He will sustain you. He will walk with you. So we are saying that don't be afraid, Zacchaeus. Don't be afraid. Today, salvation has come to your family. May the Lord bless you. This row is sleeping. Let me try this row. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord open your doors. May the Lord bless your children. May the Lord heal you when you are sick. May the Lord answer your prayers. Because today, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your family. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you.